The 10 most unusual cocktails. I've made and reacted to some unusual shit. Most of them were disgusting. I bet these will be disgusting. But you know what? It's not always about how things look. Cocktails can be disgusting and still taste good, just like people can look pretty and be nasty as hell on the inside. And to stay on theme, I didn't shower for this video. That's why I look like this. I can't believe I made that work. And this video is gonna be extra fun because I made the smart decision of going out the other night to a Friendsgiving and getting absolutely hammered, forgetting that now my body needs three days to recover. We're currently on day two. Things are getting dark. You know how when you're hungover, the last thing you want to do is look at alcohol? The hell am I gonna go? Gotta be hungover and then make these videos and pretend to be chippy? No, I'm not gonna be fake. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna sit here and be a grumpy bitch because I'm hungover and I gotta look at alcohol surrounded by alcohol. <laughs> it's okay, I got my babushka blanket. I put this on when I'm going through a hard time. So I'm gonna react to these cocktails as best I can because my brain isn't really working more so than usual. And to add a fun little twist, I got a buzzer. Because my videos weren't annoying enough. Is that okay? Can I have flaws? Don't let the Botox fool you. I have flaws. <laughs> Most of them are mental. Let's react to some drinks. The next time you're looking for an interesting drink. That's gonna kill you. That could kill you. Coming from the guy who dumped half a box of dry ice in a fruit punch cocktail and drink it. But if you're gonna risk using dry ice, you gotta make sure that it's far away enough from the edge of the glass so that your lips won't touch it. That dry ice is skimming the surf. What the fuck? But it's smoky. Oh my God, Mikey, it's smoky. So is the taste of a hooker's mouth and you don't see anyone running to that. We'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 most unusual cocktails. That's just a margarita. What's unusual about this? Top 10 mojo. Why does this girl sound like she's trapped? Why does she sound like she's reading a script by force. We're taking a look at obscure or odd cocktails, either with unusual recipe. Uh, they're completely missing the glass. Go back and look at this. What are we watching? Obscure or odd cocktails, either with unusual recipes or served. Are we just wasting product? I'm calling it product like I'm a makeup guru. Number 10, sweet and sour chicken toddy. It's always in season to warm up with a nice cocktail by the fireplace. And the sweet and sour chicken Two seconds in. Chicken broth hot. Are you out of your fucking mind? Why? Who was high and came up with this? Who was high and just took whatever was in their kitchen and threw it in a cup and called it a famous cocktail? And the sweet and sour chicken toddy hits the spot by bringing together seemingly incongruous ingredients, namely hot chicken. What the fuck does incongruous mean? That's a bit. There's too many syllables in that word. I'm a hungover. Stop. Voila, a stock tail. It may not sound especially refreshing on paper, but you'll understand what we're talking about after sipping this mixture from a toddy glass. All at once, it's sweet, salty, sour, fruity, and spicy. Because sriracha, of course. So is my asshole after I eat tacos. What's your point? Well, people do love to eat that, so maybe they're onto something. <laughs> it also brings back a nostalgic sentiment that'll hit the spot. If you want the nostalgia, just eat soup. Do you eat soup or you drink soup? Or do you eat parts of the soup and then you drink the rest? Do you eat the broth or do you drink the broth? <laughs> My brain. Number nine, coquetier. A raw egg in your beer is one thing, but how many cocktails can you think of that are served in an eggshell? A raw beer, wait, wait, a raw beer. Yeah, a raw beer. A raw egg in your beer? Is that a thing? Is that a thing? Good thing I can go to Google, just like I did whenever I didn't know how to make a drink when I first started bartending. One of the biggest reasons people mix an egg with their beer is to add more protein to their Just eat. The egg. They're fine separate. Together, that sounds worse. It's common amongst bodybuilders or those that are trying to bulk up. No, it's not. If you're doing that, you're not even supposed to have beer. Yes? Who? Coming. <laughs> yes, sorry. I got you're good. Entry, sorry about that. It's okay. Here you go, boss. Have a good one. Thank you so much. And action. If you do, <laughs> I forgot what I was saying. Oh God, that's so, that's so embarrassing. The legendary Antoine Amédée Péchot created the coquetier. Hold on, I just, I have to try to pronounce that. Amédée Péchot? Amédée Péchot. French people, am I being offensive or did I do a slay? Combining brandy and bitters, he dished out his concoction in egg cups. 
the Coxier would continue to evolve. I don't think, I don't really think that's that weird. I think that's innovative. It's biodegrad, bitch, that's biodegradable. It's saving the earth. Look at him saving the earth with egg cups. I think that's less weird than egg whites in beer. Who, I've never heard of that. The drink was given its unique signature in Berlin, Germany, where the egg cups were substituted with actual eggshells. How does it not break? Like that just seems like I'm gonna waste it. That just seems like I'm gonna break that egg. That just seems like I'm gonna spill everything. That just seems like I'm gonna spend a lot of money on something that I'm not gonna be able to put in my mouth. That's why you should never pay hookers before they get there. And people say you don't learn anything by watching my videos. It's like a hard boiled egg, minus the egg white and the egg yolk. It's like a hard boiled egg, minus the hard boiled egg. It's like a hard boiled egg, but with the one thing you discard from the hard boiled egg. That's why we come to watch Mojo for the smart humor. Coutier is actually the French word for egg cup. Coutier. Cotier. Imagine me at a bar. Would you like a cotier? Some even believe that the word cocktail derived from a mispronunciation of Oh my god, can everyone leave me alone? Can everyone leave? No. Can every- Where's my blanket? There's too much sensory. I need to go back to my babushka happy place. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. This video was supposed to be less chaotic. <laughs> Number eight, Forever Young. In the Oscar Wilde novel, the- It better have Botox in it. I want it to consist of a green juice, with a side of Botox and a little bit of filler for those who need it. What sets this cocktail apart from all the rest isn't its components, which include vodka, citrus, and vermouth, but rather how it's presented. It's a basic thing that they made fancy to cost more money. Capitalism. The drink is hidden behind a mirror with a straw running through it. The drinker look- You mean to tell me that you're gonna serve me an overpriced cocktail and then make me look at myself and think what I've done? You're gonna make me look at myself and think about my choices while I drink? That's the exact opposite effect that I want, Watch Mojo. I'm drinking to forget. <laughs> Did you? Oh no. Opium incense is also placed behind- And you throw in an opium? It's like my teens all over again. You can experience the Forever Young cocktail at the Artesian Bar in London. I'm good. Number seven, Doug Laming's Margarita. Molecular mixologist Doug Laming, however, had the inspired idea to introduce caviar to the margarita. But along with the traditional ingredients- That is so tedious. I mean, it's gorgeous and it's beautiful and it's like art, but that's so fucking, you would never, ever catch me doing that. <laughs> Unless you were gonna pay me something that would help me retire. Never in your fucking life, bitch. I don't do arts and crafts. Laming used the wonderfully titled Quaint Thrill Caviar Spherification Kit to create- how do they just say Quintro? Quantro? Am I saying it wrong or they they said Quintro? Quantro, right? Is that, have I been stupid this whole time? <laughs> Leeming used the wonderfully titled Quintro Caviar Spherification Kit to create orange liqueur pearls. Someone's gonna get sued. Someone's, they make cocktail caviar. Oh, someone's gonna get sued. You can buy this in the link to below. CW Spirits, this motherfucker spent three days stacking them in a nice little tower. I could plop that in your cocktail in two seconds, bitch, and get the same tip. Y'all got me fucked up. They're probably more passionate about their work experience, Michael. Yeah, fuck off. I just want to get paid and go home and cry. Like the average American. <laughs> Caviar and spherification kits aren't easy to come by. In the event that you- Caviar, spherification. S they're circles. Well, spheres and circles aren't the same thing. Everybody in the comments, leave me alone. Oh my God, the science people are gonna come for me. They always do. The science people and the grammar police and everybody likes to correct me when I fumble my words and say stupid shit in the video. Do I look like someone who gives a shit or knows? Number six, Earl Grey Caviar Martini. Doug Leeming isn't the only one who thought about making- Okay, so we're doing the same thing, but we're just- <laughs> Words! I hope you guys can relate to what I'm going through right now. I hope the people that watch my channel know what it's like to have the kind of hangover that just makes your brain mush. And yet y'all still want me to make all these cocktails at the same time as reacting to them and get more fun. Mixing caviar shapes into a cocktail back in the early 2010s. Instead of a margarita, however, mixologist Antonio Lai used caviar to make the classy- Look how nice his bar is. Mine's literally concaving. The flavor of this cocktail is also enhanced through the Earl Grey little jelly balls. It's a tea martini where, oh, that is cute as fuck. In addition to the Earl Grey tea caviar pearls, the cocktail is topped out with Earl Grey infused foam. How do y'all infuse foam? This is like drink masters all over again when that bitch made sea salt foam and that's fucking amazing. This is 
fucking stupendous. That's as big of a word I'm gonna use today. Stupendous. Stupendous. That's the max syllables we're using today. Laie suggests that you start off sipping the airy foam, savoring every last drop of this rich cocktail, which also includes vodka, apple juice, elderflower syrup, and a variety of other ingredients. Oh, that's foam on his face. Sorry, I went back to my teens again. <laughs> Number five, Diamonds Are Forever. Diamonds Are Forever's hefty price tag, over $1,000, was- You got me fucked up. What's the tip look like? I've heard that before. <laughs> $1,000 for a cocktail? I better piss gold. Well, the drink came in a Swarovski crystalline cocktail glass that you got to take home with you. So basically like taking a trip to the bar and a jewelry store. Why y'all spending so much money on glass? Why are you gonna spend that much money on something you're just gonna put in your mouth? I just keep thinking of hookers. This whole, I don't know why I'm watching this video of unusual cocktails and I'm just keep thinking about hookers. The original recipe is no slouch either. Comprised of rare Le Rogue. What are you straining? What are you straining? I'm sure there's a reason. I'm sure there's some horticulture-esque reason <laughs> that they're straining that cocktail. Maybe there's ingredients that I'm not seeing. Maybe it's just a safety precaution. But sometimes I feel like these mixologists just do things to make it look like a harder process so we think that they're putting in more effort to get a better tip. That's some manipulative shit I would do. And Champagne Cognac, custom made the Bitter Truth Jerry Thomas Bitters, and Luxor 24 Karat Gold Flake Champagne. I just, I don't know what they just said. I gotta be honest with y'all, I just sat here, listened to that whole thing, and didn't absorb one word. Number four, who you calling turkey? Ready for another stock tale? Can y'all stop putting meats in cocktails? Can we stop putting our meats in cocktails? That's what I say at the gay Friendsgiving. <laughs> Stop trying to turn a nice thing like Friendsgiving into an orgy, West Hollywood. Y'all think I'm kidding. The next time you throw some hamburgers and hot dogs on the grill, consider mixing a beer, bourbon, and barbecue cocktail to wash them down. That actually sounds good. Like, I would like beer infused with meats. I don't know if that's just me. I think that actually sounds good. I could also just be really hungry. It could be because I haven't eaten in two days. I don't know what's in my gut right now. I think there's some of these insomnia cookies and the children of some man, I don't know. Use the leftover gravy from your Thanksgiving meal to fat wash the vodka and throw in some fried turkey skin as a garnish. That actually sounds... That actually sounds like it would be good. I mean, I like bacon infused vodka, so I feel like that would be good. I would like to infuse it maybe with like a rye whiskey and make like a, a, a turkey infused old fashioned with wild turkey, bitch. Wild turkey, where's my sponsor? Yeah, yeah, we know this seems a little out there, but the result is a zesty trip to gravy town. Number three, the crapper. Don't let the name turn you off. This cocktail is far- Don't talk about things that are coming out of butts right now, please. As someone who enjoys putting things into butts very much, not really very fond of things that come out of it, especially not with how I'm feeling right now, because that's also a problem going through when I'm hungover. The crapper is essentially a chocolate flavored pina colada with rum and coconut. It even comes garnished with a Snickers bar because of course that's the garnish. It's you know that shit costs a hundred. In Vegas, that's over a hundred dollars. You're paying an arm and a leg for a cocktail that's based off of crap. We're all dumb as hell. <laughs> it's not exactly what you'd find the elite and powerful drinking. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Speak for yourself. I know a lot of elite and powerful people that are into fecal matter. What do they call it? Scat. They're into scat. But if you want to kick your night off of partying with something sweet, the crapper sets the perfect tone. You want, yeah, you want to know what sets the tone for your night out in Vegas? Crap. We can all toast and flush to that. Number two. Stop. Someone call Mamrie Hart and get her back on the internet so we can fix this shit. Number two, gunpowder plot. This cocktail takes a page from the gunpowder plot of 1605, a failed attempt to assassinate King James I, to achieve a spicy, smoky taste that would figuratively explode in people's mouths. Look at that dry ice. I can't get over this. I can't get over how it's literally sticking out of the cocktail and they are showing it off like it's beautiful. Fuck you. At least when I do it, it comes with a warning, like don't do this, it's stupid. I'm doing something that I'm acknowledging is stupid but these people don't do that. Collins used gunpowder infused spirits, gunpowder syrup and bitters. Is that, is that safe? I mean, we come from the generation of people eating Tide Pods. So yeah, what, let's eat gun, let's drink gunpowder. Why not? The ingredients are then shaken with Fernet Branca and egg white, then served under a smoky cloche. 
That actually sounds fabulous. Why are we doing gunpowder? Am I hearing this wrong? It's very possible. My whole body's shutting down. Number one, sour toe cocktail. I know what this is. I know what it is. I know what it is. I don't want to, I don't even. It's literally gonna be a fucking human toe. It's gonna be a severed human toe. Chicken, caviar, and gunpowder are all unusual cocktail ingredients. If there's one thing you never anticipated to find in your drink though. Oh, I wonder if it's a human toe. It's a severed toe. Yes, really. I'm so surprised that exactly what was in the name of the drink was in the drink. According to legend, a Yukon Canada bootlegger lost his toe to frostbite in the 1920s, which was kept in a jar of alcohol for- so because of this tragic thing that happened in the 1920s, we're now gonna do it as a gag to be disgusting and charge extra. <laughs> Capitalism! Do that with foreskin. What's that Greek mythology with when he cut off all the foreskins? I want you to take each one of those foreskins, dry them up, and throw it in tequila. And then make us all take shots of that so that we could feel more masculine. If we're gonna kiss a dead toe, we might as well have some liquor with it. For whatever reason, he started tossing the toe in cocktails for anyone who had the guts to take a sip and have their lips touch the toe. Imagine you buy a cocktail and some man just walks up and dumps a toe in it. Over 60,000 people have joined in the Sour Toe Cocktail Club. You don't swallow any of- Does that guy kind of look like me? <laughs> I mean, with a few less teeth and more tattoos, but look at this. You don't swallow any of that. That kind of looks like me. <laughs> Hello? I'd be out here drinking toes. I'm probably on some bender in, in, in this drinking toes, and here I am being exposed. What's happening? One's on offer since the original was accidentally consumed. That's me! I'm you don't swallow any of the toes. There have been numerous ones on offer since the original was accidentally I'm out here drinking toes! I can't handle this information right now. Do I have another me? Am I a clone? Is it anything real? What the fuck is going on? I make more money doing the toe right now than gold mining. <laughs> That's every guy who puts toes in his ass on OnlyFans. Well, that was great. Wasn't that just a fun fucking time? Let me know in the comments which one of these sounded the best to you and which sounded the worst. Would you drink a cocktail with a fucking toe in it? Would you prefer if it was a foreskin? I might do it if it was a foreskin. I would. Apparently, I'm also doing the toe. That's weird. That looked like me. That's, I'm having a little bit of a crisis right now. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and subscribe for future videos. I put them out weekly, usually on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but sometimes I'm late, just like your mom. Thank you to everybody who supports me over here on Patreon, especially the regulars and barflies who help make everything possible. It helps me to be able to afford to take a break sometimes. And as you can tell from this video, sometimes I might need it. <laughs> and special shout out to this person for retweeting my video. If you would like a special shout out in one of my videos, be sure to retweet them when they come out. If that's all, thank you guys for watching this video. My name is Mike MGTV and you are fucking well beat.